It's actually nice out here this morning, isn't it, Gems? It is. I can feel there's a little bit of warmth coming back in the air. So come on, Reggie. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are today at Bevercoats Pit. Walking the dogs again. This is where we found the gas cylinders and the uh, sack barrow. But we've just come for a quick walk with the dogs on some on some unique terrain. You're right there. Yeah, there's a load of bottles just over in that corner, as I recall, but not on our path. What I like the most about coming here is how this was an industrial landscape, of course, and nature has its own way of reclaiming the whole site. And uh, we've just walked through the wood section there, and it's absolutely lush with fresh green vegetation. And, uh, you know, a couple of hundred years, I reckon this would be fully reclaimed into some forest type area. But at the moment, I do like all these, what would you call them, alpine plants or succulents. These little ones. They seem to be early colonisers, I think is the correct term, along with the silver birch. And, uh, well, brambles, I guess. So we're going to continue on our walk and... If we find anything interesting, well, we'll friggin' share it with you. Otherwise, we're just gonna continue. Sorry, Gem, I walked straight in front of her then. We're just gonna continue walking. Um, I think down here, there is a, a pit shaft. Reg, I think this is it, what they've covered up with this soil here, look. Come here, boys. We'll just keep the camera rolling until we get there. This used to be a considerable pit shaft here. I dragged some concrete over it at one point. Yeah, the pallets over it, look. So someone's put a pallet there and then put a load of soil on. That's one of the deepest shafts that's been left open on the site, actually. So obviously now I can't show you down it. But it always used to worry me walking past there with the dogs in case one of them vanished. But other than that... All the rest of them are either relatively shallow or covered. Anyway, let's carry on walking. It's lovely out here. Well, it turns out I was wrong and I thought it would be worth capturing. So Gemma's got the dogs over there. This is the dangerous deep shaft. So just have a look down there. It is quite scary. And uh, I wouldn't want to drop my phone because that piece of concrete, which probably was the lid at one point, looks like it's going to go at any moment and go right down the bottom and cave in. I can't really uh, adjust the brightness. How's that? Can you see in the bottom? Maybe. But yeah, frightening stuff. So let's take the dogs away and around the top side. Now, I don't want to fear risking uh, boring you all before the vlog starts, boys, but uh, when we came last time to hunt for those gas bottles, this um, Weybridge office was still intact, almost. And I believe we went inside it on that video. I can't recall. But it looks like so there's definitely been some activity here since and uh, that's been like that for a good 10 or 15 years and now it's been knocked down. So I'm guessing there's been a, a digger of some type here. There's certainly evidence of scrapes on the ground and wheel marks. So I think somebody's, uh, well, they're either making the site a little bit more safe because if you was inside that building and it collapsed, you was a goner. Or um, there might be a view as to... I don't know, maybe developing the site. Who knows? I certainly don't, but uh, if we find anything, I'll be sure to stick it on a vlog. Go on then, boys. <laughs> That's skinny, isn't it? So this section over here was where they just used to pile all the coal on the floor, and then they'd pick it all up with diggers and pile it into trucks and whatever else. Well, that's from the pictures that I've seen anyway. 
Yeah, look like those big coal piles over here, big coal piles over there. Is he skidding? <laughs> Go on then, Reg. He likes it, doesn't he, having a bit of a skid? Do you see that? You see his skid marks in his pants. They're both at it. Go on then, lad. So it was just over here in this corner where we, where we rescued the um, gas cylinder. So my uh, thinking for this being the coal store, if you like, is all of this evidence on the ground. We've got all these big scratches and scrapes in the floor. And if you look at them, the pattern of them, they look like the spikes on the end of a digger bucket, don't they? They're coming in at all different angles. They're, they're everywhere. The whole place is just littered with all these scratches. So I think, my theory is, this was obviously the storage area for all the coal. And instead of picking up a load of soil when you've got a big uh, bucket full of coal, it was cheap enough for them to tarmac the whole area. So you could actually drop your bucket on the tarmac itself, slide it forwards underneath the the coal bed, pick it up and then go and drop it onto whatever truck or carriage had come and was waiting for you. What do you think? I think it's a sound theory, frankly. Gemma's right over there, look. Yeah, look at them all. Scrapes. Scrapes, all of them indicative of a digger. You know, the width of these teeth marks, if you like. More scrapes here, here, here. Absolutely everywhere. So I think I, think I could be right. And uh, by a small miracle, maybe that's an exaggeration, we're at the dirty pond where I fished out the, uh, the propane tank, or the butane tank. Anyway... We'll move on. which I ordered from Tool Station last week has arrived and uh, I just thought I'd replenish my stocks of uh, rodent bait so we do our own pest control in house and I thought I'd pick up a couple of new uh, bait stations and pop them around the brewery we've got two in the grain store and one outside I just thought it would be handy to have some up near the front door as well so I've ordered a couple more these are brand new compared to what I'm used to seeing, and they're really quite cool. So before, it was just an open container like this, and you'd pop your little pieces of rat bait inside. But these come with this little detachable bar, if I can get it out one-handed. And basically, you just poke your rat baits on it like this, or your rodent baits, and then stick it back in. And the whole idea is it stops any like big pests running off with your bait because they can't get it off here. And I think that's absolutely genius. So put this away. This is the stuff that we use. And uh, I baited everything up last week, which is why I know I needed to buy some more blocks this week because I used the last of them. And then I'm just going to close these up. You can also uh, tie wrap these. There's a couple of holes in the back. So you can tie wrap them to walls or whatever else. So they don't walk. You know, if you've got them outside, people might be inclined to pinch them. So we've got one bait station down there, if you can see it. Not very well, unfortunately, but it's there. 
we've got one on that back wall behind all of this grain. We had this grain delivery last week. Like I said, we've got one outside in the back little yard area. And I'd like to put one up on this end too. So I've not actually seen any rodents in here ever actually. But I'm going to pop one here underneath this thing there. I'll push that to the back wall later on when I get a chance. And this one, I think I'm going to put near the back door of the pub. In fact, I'm just going to pull this back out because I forgot to mention something actually. I'm going to take it back to the workshop. What I like to do on the inside, well, I'll show you. So what I wanted to point out is what I like to do on the inside of the lid is just stick a little label there with today's date really and then the next time I come to open these up and inspect them I can see how long it's been since we last had a look and we can refresh the baits kind of every year or so and uh, you know keep them active but doing that allows um, your environmental health officer if he comes along one day to see that you are actually inspecting all of your pest control on a regular basis if you're doing it in-house and not contracting it out to uh, an external company little tip for you there so in front of me uh, now I finish fanning around with rat bait in front of me is a map of where I live okay so this is the village of Ordsall here and up along all of this edge is West Retford, East Retford, and then another village called Little Gringley. And this map shows um, all the allotted fields of the village, as it says up at the top, Ordsall in the county of Nottingham in 1839. And... Uh, a chap who drinks in the pub, his name's Richard, is a bit of a historian and he's brought this along for me to have a look at because it has some very interesting markings on this particular uh, copy of the map. So if we have a look down at these fields over here, you'll see that it says Books Hop Yard and uh, hop yard close or something and then hop something else there I can't quite read that one uh, there's that willow something else hop yard it's quite difficult to make out but what it's basically showing you is that a lot of this area of um, Retford as is now this is St Ordsall but this part here has been kind of swallowed into Retford. They were all um, hop farms, loads and loads of hop farms. Gives you indications like hanging bank. So you'd imagine that they've got hops hanging in those fields. And it's not so well marked out over this side, but I just thought it was a really interesting kind of piece for you to have a look at and I wanted to share it with you for the reason that A, it's beer related, because of course we've got the hop fields there, and it's also related to where I live. And if we come up over here, in fact, we'll, we'll come from this route here. So I effectively, this is the village of Ordsall. I effectively live around there. If I was gonna put my finger on a map and point it out, I'd say there. So if we have a look at this map, this is a satellite view of Ordsall, pretty much the same as what we've got here. And this is the road view. So this little D, well, that's Dominic's mobile phone. So we know where he is. And you can kind of tie that in with this section where it says Ordsall. That's a lake where the river Idle flows into and out of. There it says Idle. And on here, you can see that we've got that lake there and what's now called Goosemore Lane goes over that 
bridge over the river. This here is Goosemore Lane. And strangely, we've got Goosemore and Hall Park on this side. And then we've got White Houses and Crabtree Close. Now there's a pub on the corner here called the White Houses. Um, I'm not sure if we can see it on, on this map. There we can, it's just there, look. So this really gives you an idea of look how developed all of this area is now. It's basically all the way from the forest edge, which is here, the plantations. And then we can go all the way across to what we have here is Bracken Lane. Okay. And here we will have somewhere, here we go, Bracken Lane there, Bracken Lane, Brick Kiln Road. So we're almost all of that from here to here has now been developed and built on. I think it's really interesting. But let's just follow this map and see if we can identify the two. So this road here, this takes us up to a little mini roundabout that will take to Worksop that way and back into Retford that way. So I drive down this road, one way of coming from work. I can go, I'll give you a little sneak peek, works here. So I can go this way round or I can come this way round to go home. So depending on whether I need to nip into town for anything, determines which way I go. Usually I come this way round. So my route to work would be to leave my house here. This road now links up with this section of road. So you just drive straight from one side of this to the next. In fact, it's been moved forwards and the waterworks here are now on the right hand side of the road. So it cuts in front just a bit. So I'd leave my house. I'd come up and I'd drive down what's called Waterworks Lane, which is now Ortsall Road. So that's Ortsall Road there. Well, they've just kept that name, Ortsall Road. Then I'd come down here to this corner. All here used to be something called Bride and Ropes. And we made, I say we, is the town, made wire ropes for years and years there. That's all now been built on as well. Then I'd come down here past a pub on this corner called the Gate Inn. And would come round the bottom. Here's Ortsall Church and the graveyard. So that plot there, 156, is now the cemetery for the church. Then we'd come and we'd take a sharp left turn over a bridge here and drive all the way out of Goosemore Lane. And then we're on to what used to be um, the, main, the Great North Road. So as you can see here, to London. And that ran straight through the middle of the town of Retford. This side it says York, this side it says London. So we're coming up this track here, Goosemore Lane, and we're going to turn left where the White Houses are. It says they're White Houses and Crabtree Close. Is that close or something? Anyway, you get the idea. And then we drive up here, Grove Coach Road, still there now, Brick Kiln Lane, Bracken Lane now it's called, that one. And this is Thrumpton Lane here. We come all the way up this road, up London Road as it's now called. And just on the end here, we can see Carolgut Bridge. So this is the bridge going over the canal. This is the canal. As you can see, there isn't any development here because this would have all been uh, just open kind of works for, well, you can see there's some, the marina is still shown there. And the marina is there today. In fact, it's part of the scenery from our beer garden. But there would have been industrial works going on around here. And you can see in 1839, the Bruce Shed building was not there. Which I think is really quite interesting. But the bridge definitely is. So there we go. I mean, brief. And uh, I could go into a lot more detail with this map because I've been staring at it for an hour now. And finding all the waypoints and everything is really fascinating for me. But it's something that I just wanted to share with you. Because little do people know that Retford was actually uh, one of the northernmost hop markets in the country. 
and we did indeed grow our own hops up here and one of the varieties I believe is called North Clay. Now there is some information online about the North Clay variety but I don't think it's in existence anymore. In fact I think if you're going to find any North Clay it'll possibly be growing at the side of the roads down some of these tracks in Retford and they'll probably be what are more commonly known as land race varieties now so they will have been cross pollinated and probably changed that much since that variety uh, to be unrecognisable from the original well there we go nice little uh, walk around a map of my village if you like of course it's no longer a village anymore because as you can see quite clearly it has been consumed by the rest of Retford and we can see quite clearly here that these two orange marks not that clear actually but those two orange marks that's the brew shed and the brewery there we have it well thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed have a look in the description and follow all those links do us a favor hope you enjoyed it we'll see you on the next one cheers mm -hmm.